I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe that there is some kind of global cabal trying to get all of us vaccinated for their nefarious ends. However, there is something that the conspiracy theorists and I have in common. We don't want to take a vaccine that's been rushed to market. Personally, I think the truth is often obvious and in plain sight. Rich people like to make money. True. Vaccine manufacturers want to produce and sell vaccines. True. I don't think that's debatable, and certainly isn't a conspiracy theory. It's obvious in my opinion, and goes a long way in explaining what we're seeing at the moment. The vaccine companies have seen an opportunity in the pandemic to make a ton of money, but they don't get that money unless 1. They get their product to the market first, and 2. They convince governments around the world that their vaccine is best. However, that doesn't mean we should just willy-nilly go along with the first vaccine that's made available. After all, it's our health at stake here. Just because a vaccine company, a company that has a vested interest in selling their product, says that their vaccine is safe, does not mean that we should just go, OK Mr Vaccine Company, I'll take your vaccine without questioning it. The ABC recently published an article where experts answered many of the common questions and doubts that people are having here in Australia. I would argue that generally speaking, the ABC is fairly pro-vaccination but the results of this article weren't very reassuring. Let me go through these questions one by one. Will you be required to be vaccinated with the chosen vaccine of each country visited? Experts replied that that's in the too speculative basket. OK, not a good start. Does taking multiple vaccines give you better protection? The experts replied, that's an unknown unknowable. OK, fair enough I suppose. Will you need a vaccine if you have already had the virus? We don't know how long immunity lasts after having the virus, and we know people who have had the infection don't all respond equally. We vaccinate to try and increase protection in the population, so having had the infection, it doesn't, it shouldn't preclude you from taking the vaccine. Can a vaccinated person still spread the virus? This is the big unknown from these vaccines. Everyone is talking about herd immunity, but we don't know whether these vaccines will stop infection. A vaccine, crudely, has two ways of stopping you getting sick. It might stop you getting infected in the first place, or it might let you get infected and stop you getting severe disease. Again, another unknown. Will Australians be exposed to multiple vaccines from different companies? This is highly likely, but we still don't know which vaccine works best for which groups. Different manufacturers will have different trials going and will have different data for different groups. We may end up with a mix. Could there be any long-term side effects? Important question, probably the most important question that many people will be worried about. We haven't had a long enough term to study this. We don't know enough yet. When I think long term, I think years, and nothing can be studied adequately for long term effects for anything relating to this disease yet, as it hasn't existed long enough. OK, that doesn't really allay my fears. If one vaccine has 95% efficacy, what happens to the other 5%? We haven't seen the data, and there are lots of different elements here, but there are two schools of thought. We have an all or nothing vaccine, where it really is the case where 95% are protected and won't get infected, and 5% may. Whereas a leaky vaccine, there's an idea that everyone is kind of a bit protected, and it depends on who these people are, their age, demographic, race, etc., who haven't responded. But again, we haven't seen the full data set. It's really, really hard to comment right now. We just can't say for sure. So basically, our brightest minds don't know enough about the vaccine, but yet countries like England will be pushing it on their public. In my opinion, if we don't know enough about the long-term effects of the vaccine and the risk of side effects, then surely this rollout can only be labelled one way. An experiment. A mass experiment on the British public. I hope Australians are smart enough to wait this one out. The pandemic is pretty much over in Australia. It's not like thousands of people are getting infected every day with hundreds of people dying from it. Quite the opposite. Apart from potential international border restrictions and all the rest of it, there is absolutely no need for Australians to rush out and get a vaccine. I think the best course of action, and the smartest course of action, is to watch what happens in other countries that choose to run these mass rollouts. 
Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, the UK government have chosen their own people to be the guinea pigs. Vaccine hesitancy has become a real thing, and based on this ABC article with all these uncertain opinions from experts, I think people are right to be hesitant. And even if you do get the vaccine, don't expect things to go back to normal. Even the World Health Organization's Director General, Dr Tedros, who by the way is the first Director General in the WHO's 72-year history not to be a medical doctor, tweeted that a vaccine itself will not end the pandemic. The following activities will continue. Surveillance, testing, isolating and caring for cases, tracing and quarantining contacts, engaging communities, and encouraging individuals to be careful. If you're American and hesitant about the vaccine, apparently about 40% of you are according to the Pew Research Center, never fear, Joe Biden will not force you to have a vaccine, but will do everything in his power as president to encourage you to do the right thing. He also said that he will happily be televised taking the vaccine, as did former presidents Obama, Clinton and Bush. In my opinion, watching an old president on TV take a vaccine, which may or may not be a real vaccine, would not allay any of my fears. So that's just a whole lot of rhetoric, in my opinion. It's kind of like the Japanese politicians and movie stars stars who ate locally produced raw vegetables to demonstrate their safety after the Fukushima nuclear disaster. That doesn't prove anything. That just proves that the vegetables don't have enough radiation to make you drop dead immediately. Similarly, American presidents getting televised vaccinations doesn't prove very much. Even if Joe Biden actually dropped dead after taking his vaccine, we still wouldn't know if it was because of the vaccine or because he's just some old guy who happened to win the presidency. I mean, in some TV appearances I've seen, I thought he had dropped dead, but it turns out that it was just past his bedtime. Will you take the vaccine as soon as it comes to market, or will you do the smart thing and wait? 